Now we're going to bring on our first comedian. He is a very funny guy, a regular here at the New York Comedy Club. Give some love for Jeff Simon! What up, Scott? The great Scott. One of the top divorce attorneys in uh, the whole city. And he, I've, divor I've been divorced so many times I have his number on uh, speed dial. Or whatever it's called. All right, so I blew the first fucking joke. Right. Uh, I'm a Jew from New York. He was supposed to say that, but he didn't. Uh, I grew up in the 50s. Uh, my favorite Jew on the Yankees was the general manager. The Yankees were the most anti-Semitic organization in sports. The only reason they had a Jew general manager because he was he would Jew down uh, players that were on salary negotiations. This guy was such a cheap fucking Jew that uh, in 58, uh, he cut Mickey Mantle's salary the year after he won the MVP. He's such a cheap fucking Jew. Uh, we finally got a Jew in the 70s, but he was so bad that we had to wait till this year to get another Jew. His name was Eucalyptus. Is that a Yankee fans here? Drink up, motherfucker. All right, all right, all right. Don't be shy. Um, I was at a game, we got a, his name is Eucalyptus, this guy. I was at a game this year when he struck out with the bases loaded, and this guy sitting next to me, uh, with a Hitler mustache, after he struck out, started yelling, uh, you suck, uh, go back to, go work on Wall Street with all the other Jews. Believe this shit? I said to this guy, shut the fuck up, you motherfucker, or I'll shove my bagel down your throat. <laughs> Fucking believable. Uh, don't ever sell a TV set to a Jew. I was moving, so I had to sell this high-def TV set. It was like six years old, but I only watched it like five times. So, uh, I said, give me 400 bucks. Th th this motherfucker drew me down to 50 bucks. I, I, I was really mad at myself. I, I know I could have sold it to a Christian or a black guy for like 200. But I was just too fucking lazy. Uh, I divorced my last wife 12 years ago. I would have got divorced a lot sooner, thank you. But my father-in-law told me if I ever divorced his daughter, I'd be dog food. I had to wait for this motherfucker to die. <laughs> and, and, uh, right before they pulled the plug on this guy's respirator, I asked him if he was serious about the dog food line. I couldn't understand the gurgling. You know, when the respirator, when someone's on a restaurant, I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying. I still don't know. Uh, I tell you that the best time to meet a woman is when her husband dies. That's why I like to be in the ICU when they pull a plug on a guy's respirator. <laughs> You know, if I can't make the ICU, I like to be at the funeral when it's over, when, when everybody starts walking back to the car. The only thing, you gotta put up with these cock-blocking kids <laughs> who are clinging to their mommy saying stupid shit like, uh, you're not gonna start dating right away, are you, mommy? These fucking kids are unbelievable. But uh, I know this woman, uh, she's, she's really nice, but she's got more baggage than the Delta Carousel at Newark Airport on an arriving flight from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot have a relationship with a woman with this much baggage. You just can't, you know, because you never get to have sex. You never get to meet her family, you know. I don't care if I ever meet her mother in a nursing home or a father with Parkinson's, but I'd like to meet her daughter who just got divorced. It's really hard to have a picture of myself on her. She's my go-to chick whenever I jerk her off. Oh, shit. Really. Um... I was watching, ha anybody watch Hannity here on Fox? Come on, raise your hand. What are you, closet or Republican <laughs> I was watching it uh, the other night, and uh, he had on um, one of these Tea Party Republicans, you know, that actually made sense. You know, he actually, for the first time, a Tea Party Republican made sense. Because, you know, he's for tax cuts for billionaires, but he had a way for the government to pay for these tax cuts, you know. Raise the minimum age of Social Security to 95. <laughs> Close down all the VA hospitals and end food stamps. A plan, you know, he had a fucking plan, you know? Had a plan. What are you fucking people mad at me for, you know? <laughs> uh, Hillary's definitely going to be running in 2016. I, I'm voting for her. Uh, she, in fact, she's got a haircut, she lost weight. I think she got a rear suction. Because if it was four in the morning and I was drunk, I would definitely fuck her. <laughs> and, uh, you only. The only thing she's got to do to beat Christy, he was going to be running on the Republic thing, is she's got to get a popular black running mate, you know? A guy, somebody a little more animated than Obama, you know? 
Like, I like to see somebody like Stephen A. Smith from ESPN <laughs> run for vice president. I think he'd be good. You know who else? Steve Harvey, the guy from Family Feud. <laughs> this guy has taken that show. He took it over from John O'Hurley, Elaine's boss on Seinfeld. He took it over from, it was at the bottom of the ratings. He's second behind Judge Judy. I think he'd make a great, great president. I tell you, I'd like to know why every fucking cop and fireman in New York City is on steroids. You ever notice how big these motherfuckers are? This, I, I get pulled over by a cop for making a legal turn, and uh, this guy, he looks like an NFL linebacker. He goes, uh, comes up to my car and says, Give me a license and registration, motherfucker! And his eyeballs are popping out of his fucking head. <laughs> this guy's head is bigger than Barry Bonds' head, I swear to God. I said, relax, why not give it to you? Said, Leave me alone, don't kill me, you know? What the, I, I don't know why these guys get away with doing the steroids, you know? So I, I had to go to court, you know, to fight the ticket, you know, and uh, I knew I was in trouble and I got this liberal judge who was letting all the black guys go. <laughs> this, this guy before me, this guy before me was doing 100 miles an hour in a school zone uh, because he was late for a meeting with his crack dealer. And, uh, this, and he was wearing a Puck the Foley's t-shirt, one of these Puck the Foley's t-shirts, you ever see him? And, it, and the judge goes, not guilty, you're not guilty, let this guy go. I get up there next, I'm being respectful to the judge, I'm wearing a tie, I called him your honor, and he says, uh, guilty, you're lucky I don't throw you in jail for the night, go pay the clerk. I mean, can you believe this fucking shit? It's tough, and, uh, yeah, that's right, that was tough, but that was tough. And then, uh, I, I, I hate old people, I hate old people. <laughs> You know, they, uh, they drive to, what do they have to drive so slow? They hold up every line because they won't use a debit card. <laughs> and uh, I was watching the Old Timers Day game. Now, anybody ever watched it, the Yankee game? And uh, all the guys I grew up watching when I was a kid, they're either dead or they look like shit, you know? I mean, Whitey Ford and Yogi Berra had to be wheeled out on a golf court. And Yogi didn't know where the fuck he was. All he kept saying was, uh, I hope Mickey's going to be in a lineup today. Koufax is pitching. <laughs> Um, he's talking about, uh, uh, what am I talking about here? Yeah, so, and then, uh, I, I, I hate these Dunkin' Donut bitches that automatically give you the senior discount, you know? That really pisses me off, you know? Then I got stopped on the street the other day, this guy uh, stops me and he says, you look very familiar, and I go, I know, motherfucker, Grandpa hugs the bull. I get stopped like 20 times a day. That's fucking real. But, uh, uh, I'm a pharmacist, I work for Rite Aid. Anybody go to Rite Aid here? Yeah, the other day, uh, we had a, every gay guy in Manhattan was in Rite Aid the other day. We had a sale on bounty paper towels, 15 rolls for seven ninety nine. What do you guys have, stock and bounty, you gay guys? What the fuck is it? How many fucking rolls do you need to clean up your mess, you know? 15 fucking rolls, man? Wow. Uh, my wait time at Rite Aid is uh, 20 minutes. Anybody go to write in? That's a pretty good wait time. Yeah. Unless if you're uh, daddy's little girl entitlement bitch who double parks her Mercedes in front of Rite Aid and comes in and says, uh, if you don't rush my script, I'm going to tell you you're boss. I'm going to call you boss and get you fired. I did it in 20 seconds. I can't mess around. I got two years to go for Medi you know, Medicare, Social Security. You know, I filled up birth control. And then a couple minutes later, this gay guy comes in and says, if you don't suck my cock, I'm going to call your boss and get you fired. <laughs> I said to this guy, uh, I get out of work at 5 o'clock, get the fuck out of here. I'll see you in the parking lot behind a dumpster. You know, where we always meet no homo. I cannot afford to lose my job, you know. I need health care. I'm getting fucking old. Uh, we, have this, uh, we have this blood pressure machine, like in the waiting area of the pharmacy. And uh, these people come in, and uh, they take their pressure, they want me to make a comment on it. You know, they'll go, uh, uh, 120 over 80, I'll go awesome. 110 over 70, what do you want, to live forever? 250 over 230, I have a better chance to get an HBO special than you have of being alive at this time tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, we have this lady that calls up at uh, the same time every day at one o'clock every day at the same time, ask the same exact question, 
and she she forgets what you tell her like a minute later because she has memory loss. And the question it always is, you know, Dr. Simon, she calls me she calls me doctor. Are geriatrics as good as brand name? I said, do you mean are generics as good as brand name? Yes, yes, yeah, generics are just as good, and you save a lot of money, you know? You save a lot of money by getting generics. Uh, does that answer your question, you smelly, cunt, dumb, fucking bitch? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, do you have any other questions? Yes, are geriatrics as good? I said, listen, here's what we're going to do, lady. I'm going to have somebody come over to your house tonight around 9 o'clock, Dr. Kevorkian. <laughs> And he's going to give you a lethal dose of morphine. Uh, you won't, it'll be painless, and you're going to stop breathing, okay? I just, I can't take, you call me up every day when I'm trying to finish my script so I can go to fucking lunch. I can't take this shit anymore. I just can't fucking take it. All right, uh, I'm going to give you back to the great Scotty! Thank you very much. All right, come on, keep that energy level going. Yeah. That's what you got to see, right?